Hey, I hope your day is going great. Looks like it worked pretty good. Compost. Ooh, we need some wood chips. All right, we're going to vent out the nursery greenhouse. Got rather warm in here. Where's the sprinkler? Yeah. Where is the sprinkler? Can you show it to me? Where do I gotta turn on the sprinkler? In there. Is it? That's that's not in there. That's the greenhouse, silly. Right here. Right here? Yeah. Maybe right here? Yeah. And right here? Yeah. Okay. It looks like I gotta hook the hose up. Okay, go for it, bud. <laughs> get it, buddy? Oh, man. You know what, Arlo? Remember how mommy and daddy always talk about we're sore? Guess who else is going to be sore tomorrow? Maybe. Oh. <laughs> Arlo. Guys, we're coming, um, or at least I'm coming at you from the inside of our um, our nursery greenhouse again. A lot of parents and a lot of students that are requesting me to um, to go over some of the math work that I put out there on um, on one of the, a couple of the last videos. I'm going to go ahead and do that, but I'm, today what I'm going to do is read a story, and I'm, I'm so I'm going to do a read aloud. And I might ask some questions, and there might be some extension activities that I'll, I'll give you guys ideas to do with. Now, I don't want you to think because this is a book that normally you would read to, uh, you know, a five or a six or a seven-year-old that students that are nine and ten can't do these activities as well. Uh, children of all ages love being read to, so uh, I will encur I would encourage you also, parents, if you're not already. Uh, read aloud to to your kids. There's one thing that I, I I do know as a teacher is is that when you read aloud to your kids, the kids love it. They love it whether it's from a parent, whether it's from a teacher, uncle, aunt, whatever, grandmother, grandfather. So read aloud and um and engage them with the read aloud. So ask them questions. Have extension activities from them. Try to make them fun, not just paper and pencil questions that are comprehension questions. So I'm going to try to do that today. We are going to read today. The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. One of my favorites, one of Arlo's favorites. Okay guys, The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carle. One thing I really love about this book as you're going through is all of the colors. The colors are just amazing in this book. There's a little note to you from Eric Carle. And he dedicated this for his sister, Krista. Very nice of him. Okay, guys, let's get started. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. 
Can you see the egg? One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop! Out of the egg came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. I love the colors he uses. He started to look for some food. On Monday, he ate through one apple, but he was still hungry. On Tuesday, he ate through two pears, but he was still hungry. On Wednesday, he ate through three plums, but he was still hungry. On Thursday, he ate through four strawberries, but he was still hungry. On Friday, he ate through five oranges, but he was still hungry. On Saturday, he ate through one piece of chocolate cake, one ice cream cone, one pickle, one slice of Swiss cheese, one slice of salami, one lollipop, one piece of cherry pie, one sausage, one cupcake, and one slice of watermelon. That night, he had a stomach ache. The next day was Sunday again. The caterpillar ate through one nice green leaf. And after that, he felt much better. Now he wasn't hungry anymore, and he wasn't a little caterpillar anymore. He was a big, fat caterpillar. Whoa! He built a small house, called a cocoon, around himself. He stayed inside for more than two weeks. Then he nibbled a hole in the cocoon, pushed his way out, and guess what happened, guys? He was a butterfly! Unbelievably beautiful butterfly. The end. All right, guys, remember, this is The Very Hungry Caterpillar by Eric Carl. And there are many extension activities you can do with this, one of which I, I would like to challenge anyone out there that may be a third, fourth, or fifth grader to maybe do a little bit of a research and do a little bit more research on caterpillars and how they become butterflies. I know that you uh, do this in the primary grades, but it would be really awesome if you were a little bit older and you did a little bit more extensive research on and how, how caterpillars become butterflies. Because if you really think about it, there aren't many other insects or organisms in our world that quite does what a caterpillar does by turning into a butterfly. So it's really interesting to, to do a little bit more research about how and why and you know how long it takes and all the things that go into how a caterpillar becomes a beautiful, I'm gonna show you again, this amazingly colorful butterfly, okay? So another activity that you could do, and you could tie in symmetry to this, is you could actually create your own butterfly. You could draw a caterpillar in the middle of your paper and draw one wing off one side and color it all the different amazing colors that you'd want to color it. And then you could draw the other wing on the other side and try to make a mirror image, okay? A mirror image means you're gonna see exactly the opposite on one side, then that's on the other side. Is Does this butterfly right here have wings that are mirror images? I would say they're pretty close, but I can guarantee you Eric Carl probably made it different on purpose because Eric Carl likes to be unique, creative, and different. So you could either draw an Eric Carl butterfly that looks something like this, or you could be creative and draw your own. Or if you wanted to tie symmetry into the lesson, you could try to be as symmetrical as possible. Once again, symmetrical means that it is the same on one side that it is on the other. The same exact size and the same shapes and the same colors and all that. Okay, so think of a mirror image. 
all right guys so I hope you have fun with this once again the very hungry caterpillar by Eric Carl um, wonderful book please pick it up all of Eric Carl's books are wonderful um, once again if you would like to share any of the um, assignments or any of the activities that you guys do from me sharing on YouTube I would love to see to, to have an email from you or I would love for you to post it somewhere and on social media and I would love to share that with everybody so please do that we want to stay learning we want to stay doing activities and keep our brains nice and fresh so for whenever we turn return back to school we want to make sure that we stay engaged in learning okay guys so I will catch you soon see you later bye hey guys I hope that you enjoyed my read aloud of Eric Carl's the very hung the very hungry caterpillar uh, I enjoy reading out loud a lot um, it's fun to get into so please do this as parents please do this uh, another activity that you could do the spin off of this if you have a few children you have two or three kids and one of your kids is older let's say eight or nine and then you have younger kids that are three four or five you can always have the older child read to the younger child also turn it back around and have the younger child read to the older child so when they when people read to each other the other people uh, usually when you're getting read to you enjoy it okay so um, I'm hoping you're enjoying these videos. Please make sure you're leaving comments. I know everything's kind of crazy right now with school and there's really a lot of questions and everything's up in the air. But stick with it, guys. Keep watching the videos. Um, I'm going to keep bringing them. Like I said, I probably won't have the math video showing solutions until tomorrow, okay? All right, guys. Stay tuned. Bye.